Okay, so recently I did a video on the Raspberry Pi 5 and Android TV. And I thought I'd show some of the positives of Android TV on a Raspberry Pi 5. But I'd also maybe explain why this might not replace your existing streamer or might not be the best streamer to buy for you. Now it doesn't actually boot on my 4K TV, uh, which is behind here. Uh, but there is something in the documentation from Consta Kang that says how to do it. But the way I made it happen was basically to turn on the TV. Oh, it's hit something and just switch cables because it boots up on my 1080 monitor and you'll see that it detects it and as you can see it's working fine although the resolution at the moment is set to 1080 so I was using an Xbox control just now I'm using a dongle now and I've just plugged it in and it pairs with this remote control and this is a voice remote control but also if I well you can see it's got a mouse pointer on it as well first thing you want to do is go up to settings which is right at the top here and then go to system Scroll down to Raspberry Pi settings and go down because there's one feature you need to turn on and this is mouse back button, this one here. So turn that on and now when we press the home button, which is this one here, it goes back and you need that because you need to be able to get back to the home screen. But uh, we've got, as I say, up, down, left, right. I'm not sure if this one does anything. No, it doesn't. Volume control works. So that's the volume coming from the box or the Raspberry Pi. Mute works as well. Uh, not sure if delete does anything. I guess it will if there's any keyboard inputs. Uh, but also microphone. So if we press the microphone button, you can see here, allow Google to record audio. So I'll say while using the app. And now let's see what happens. Might need to enable it. Yeah, continue. And I'm going to say allow and continue and yes so if I now press that button what's the weather like today currently in Barnstable it's minus three degrees and sunny today it will be mostly sunny with a forecast high of seven and a low of minus three launch Apple TV opening all of that seems to be working and if we move around you can see yeah, it's working really well there's no Chromecast in these builds because it's not an official product. But with one app, which is called Air Receiver, it does work very well with iOS. And I see there is a cast option, but first of all, let's show iOS. So if I grab my iPad, I can drag down from the top and uh, find an AirPlay device, in this case, Raspberry Pi 5 AirPlay. And you can see that it straight away comes up and uh, it's lovely and responsive and also if I go to YouTube and uh, call up my video, Lee PSP video, I should be able to spell my own channel name, HDR and let's play a bit of that just to show you that video playback is also decent when AirPlay mirroring and it does exactly the same as it does on an Apple TV, so it pauses the content on here, but it's playing on here. Let's just skip past that advert. And if I switch on my speaker, I'm not sure if I've got this set up to come through. Oh yeah, I have. So yeah, really working well. And just switch it back to the iPad, and you can see straight away it goes back to that. Let's try the cast bit actually. So I've not had that before. Uh, and I've had this app for ages. It cost two pounds something, I think, uh, a long time ago. But if I go home now, I don't know if I didn't need to do a restart or anything. I guess if I pick, well, this is YouTube anyway, so this should have casting. Yeah, it does show up, Raspberry Pi 5 cast. So if I tap on that, And you can see it's detected it as a YouTube device. And it's playing. So will that do it with uh, something like Amazon Prime? I'm guessing it probably will. So Prime Video. And let's just get it starting to play something uh, maybe something I'll be less likely to get copyright strikes on. 
So if I tap on that, and yeah, Raspberry Pi Cast is coming up. And it looks like it's gonna work. Yeah. That's really impressive actually. I, I didn't realize that app worked quite so well as it did and I'd never really had an issue with it. It works well with the Pi 4 as well. I've got separate videos uh, on this working on Pi 4. So yeah, very impressive. So let's not leave out Android. And I've just noticed uh, when I did the last part of the video, my iPad was covered in, uh, well, it's actually hand cream because it's been minus five the last couple of days I've been cycling into work. Anyway, uh, let's hit that. It's probably good for comments anyway. So uh, seven minutes left of this episode. I have a TV license. And when it starts playing on here, I can then tap that and casting to Raspberry Pi 5 cast. And here's iPlayer. Now, uh, you can see I've got various apps installed in here. The Google Play Store, I've got a tutorial on how I installed that. I've got a web browser on here, Spotify, Amazon Prime, VLC, Plex. Uh, Plex works really well. Uh, and you, obviously you can stream from a Plex server as well or watch the content that's already on there. Uh, it's also really well supported, but every time I put it on my screen, I usually get demonetized, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, so Apple TV, I've already shown in the shorts video, actually works fine. So you can see that it launches. Oh, okay, well it was working. Well, this is a bit of a theme because if I go to Amazon Prime Video, it does exactly the same. So I think it detects that it's not an official device, even though the casting was working, but obviously that's coming through a different system. Um, but if we try and play that James May program again, yeah, something went wrong. It does the same sort of thing, I think with Netflix, although I haven't got a signed in account. And I have enabled Widevine. Uh, so this really is the bit that's the problem. Uh, and I'll show some more positives after this, but uh, let's just exit that app. And I should use the browser on this. L3 support. Let's see if that comes up with, yeah, Android Authority. So you can enable Widevine uh, on this. It's just a zip file that you download and that should give you some compatibility. Uh, and you can see things like Disney Plus, Netflix and Prime Video. Although I have enabled it and it still doesn't seem to like it. But also level three, so assuming that it does work, you definitely don't get anywhere near you would get on a Fire Stick, a Roku or a Chromecast or what I use, Apple TV. The Chrome web browser on desktops will only ever support level three maximum. If your device is only L3 compliant, you're capped at sub HD resolution. So not even, well 720 is classed as HD. So not even 720. If it's a small screen, that's not much of a problem. But if you're looking at it on anything bigger than a 32 inch TV, you're really gonna notice it. So that's definitely the reason it's not gonna be suitable for a lot of people because you're gonna want Netflix and Disney Plus and Amazon Prime and Apple TV and all of those services. If you don't use any of those services and you use things like and Plex and uh, you've ripped your own content and things like that, that's fine. It will actually do very well on that. But I have been asked a few times on the Android TV video about 4K and HDR. Uh, things like Dolby Atmos isn't going to be supported and Dolby Atmos support on Apple TV is excellent. It's also pretty good on the Amazon Fire Stick. Uh, I'm not sure about Google Chromecast. Uh, I think Roku's got quite good support on it as well. But let's end on a positive. Uh, so Crossy Road is a game that I installed. It's a, an Android TV game and it works really well. The Apple TV version used to have a multiplayer version which was excellent. But I don't know if it still works. Oh. So you can see that's working fine. I know it's a basic game, but it's definitely enjoyable. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Uh, but if we go back, uh, so also worth mentioning the Android TV launcher, and I had a tip about this in my comments from Sipart. Uh, worth trying Projectivity Launcher in the Android TV Play Store. The Android TV launcher is not so cool after a while. And yeah, part of the thing is that it doesn't show up all the apps that you installed. It only really shows up uh, and lets you add to this bar 
the apps that are compatible with Android TV. Uh, and so if you install a separate game or an emulator or something like that, it just won't show up on here. But the Projectivity Launcher looks pretty much as good as uh, Android TV. And you can see the same shortcuts are up the top here, but also we've got some apps here. So AppTide Store, the Files app, ITVX, Netflix, Now TV, uh, that although they don't show up on here, they do show up on this bit. So Aether SX2, the PS2 emulator, uh, and we've also got various different things on here. A lot of control over settings as well. So Android settings, the launcher settings, it's all customizable, display profiles, really, really nice launcher and uh, yeah, works super well and just gives you a lot more control over what you add to your home screen and also just being able to launch everything without having to go sort of deep into the settings to be able to find it. So still great work by Consta Kang bringing this out. Obviously you can't really do an awful lot about uh, the sort of high level of encryption that is required to run these official apps at 4K, HDR, Dolby Atmos and all that. But if you don't need that, then it's still worth trying out Android TV. Uh, and it's good for gaming, it's good for large screen, for you know the operating system and everything is really nice to use. And obviously the AirPlay is great. And you can use that AirPlay for all the apps really. So uh, you know the good thing about AirPlay or Chromecast, if you've got someone visiting and they've got something like Disney Plus signed in on their account, they can just join your Wi-Fi network and cast to your TV. And that seems to work incredibly well. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.